I'm Dave, and welcome to Indow, the way of the indie. This is the story of how I learned to use the Unity engine for game development. So Unity is a potent little engine that can develop games for lots of platforms and has great documentation and all that, but truthfully, that's not the real reason I picked it. The real reason is because Quill18 had a bunch of tutorials on a secondary channel and he made it look easy. And to be honest, it is pretty easy. This is good because making games is hard. So fighting the engine software is not really a battle you want to have on top of it all. I looked into other options, of course, and there are really great alternatives out there, but Unity could do what I needed it to, and if something's good enough, then it's good enough. There's no shortage of perfectionist developers out there who are constantly refining and optimizing and worrying about doing things the right way, but they're basically paralyzed by it, and I try not to be one of those. For me, the most important thing in learning a new piece of software is feeling like I can express myself with it. And I get that this seems vague, but what I mean is that I don't want to feel uncertain as to what is and isn't possible, and not know where to click, or where to look for things, or just feeling lost. So the first goal is actually replacing that with familiarity. Once that's done, I'm in a place where I can start turning ideas into real stuff. Unity is very welcoming to newcomers for this, and they have great resources for familiarizing people with the engine. There's lots of tutorials online, but at the early stages I found the training on the Unity site by far the most helpful. So after installing Unity, the first thing I did was the Rollaball tutorial. They said to start there, so I did. Honestly, it was a pretty cool experience. I made a thing. I didn't understand a lot of what was going on, but that's fine, it felt good to make. After that, the next one on the list for me was the Space Shooter tutorial, so I did it. It had a bit more scripting and started using more elaborate assets, and none of these tutorials offer any real help on how you're going to get those assets, but that's a problem for a different video. The point is to gradually learn the interface of the Unity engine, and by extension, to start learning how to program, and how to code for this engine. I mentioned this in the first video in the series, but I'll reiterate, I was already a fairly experienced programmer when I came to these tutorials, so I wasn't so much learning programming as I was learning programming for Unity. I even already had experience with C-sharp for game development, as I would tried and basically failed to do some development using the XNA framework for Xbox 360 back in the day. These tutorials start off with the basics of programming, which I think is a good thing no matter your experience level, but reading and understanding the script language wasn't a new experience. I was familiar with C-sharp, object-oriented programming, functions and variables, basically everything I needed. Basically everything you need to know to make games. Anyway, the Space Shooter was a really helpful tutorial and I started experimenting a little bit in this one. Rather than do exactly what they told me, I started doing little tiny different things, like changing the speeds of objects and stuff like that. Now, these aren't really programmatically difficult. Most of the time it's changing a number to a six instead of a five or something like that. But this sort of self-expression is important. It's the first baby step on the personal journey towards independence. I did the survival shooter next, and at this point, hit my first interesting problem. The tutorial was written for an older version of Unity than the one I was using, and so all the assets were built using the older version. And every update, there's a few minor changes, and some things need to be done a little bit differently, and some systems look differently. So I needed to actually do a little bit of problem solving, because the pieces didn't quite fit. It was a bit scary, but it was a good exercise for me to do. Finally, the last tutorial I did from Unity was their roguelike tutorial. This one I mostly blitzed through, and while it introduced some good concepts, I was mostly on autopilot as I went through it, and I could take it or leave it, to be honest. They had other tutorials available, and they have even more now, and some of them look pretty cool, but I'm not going to comment on those. For me, at that stage, I wanted to switch away from learning the engine, as I was getting pretty familiar with the pieces of it, and I wanted to focus on using it on a slightly larger project that was a bit less neat and tidy than those closed, isolated systems of their tutorials, where all the assets are pre-designed to fit and work. So I found a YouTube channel called Brackies, and they had an excellent tutorial series on making a 2D platformer. Now, I didn't want to make a 2D game, and I didn't even want to make a platformer, although there are a lot of similarities, to be sure. But I had decided this would be a good thing to learn. The tutorial was in 30 parts, and I did all of it. I had to deal with disparity in Unity versions again, but it was still a good test. And as I started getting towards the end, I began the final test I designed for myself, which was to recreate Super Mario Bros, the original, as closely as possible. There were tutorials for making knockoffs, probably for copyright protection, but this one I wanted to do entirely on my own. For the record, I didn't feel ready to do this. Feeling ready is an illusion. If you feel ready, then it's not a test. Uh, actually, you know what? I want to go on a little rant for a minute. Learning is agony. A lot of people I know talk about how they love learning new things and how school is fun and all that, and I want to clarify that that's not what learning is. These people are talking about knowing things. Knowing stuff is great. Learning is terrible. 
It's a journey full of doubt, confusion, and discouragement. It can be rewarding, and the journey sometimes isn't even that long or hard, but not knowing things is a challenging place to be in. This video is mostly about technical skills that need to be acquired, and make no mistake, mastering them feels great. But the act of learning requires going from ignorance to knowledge, and confronting and processing your own ignorance is not a cool feeling. In the first episode, I talked about the importance of personal character, and it's because of stuff like this. So, when I started the Mario clone without relying on any outside help, it wasn't because I felt ready in the sense that I felt I could succeed, I just felt that I could start. And I had to go back and review stuff, and I had to check out other tutorials, and I had bugs that took hours to fix, only to find that they were simple. And I had other bugs that took hours to only discover they were complex, and a massive pain to solve. And for the record, the goal wasn't to create some knockoff, it was to reproduce everything as closely as possible. The feeling of Mario's jumps, the level layout, the color limitations, everything. I'm not sure if this is a copyright issue, so I'm neither going to confirm nor deny whether I followed through on this plan, but suffice to say, after a while, I felt that I had reached a level of comfort with the Unity engine in using c -sharp script, and I was ready to move on. That's not to say I knew everything, far from it. There were critical pieces of knowledge I was still missing that would be necessary to learn, there were features I didn't understand, and there were things I thought I understood that I didn't, and I would need to consult the tutorials many more times to remember some of what I had allegedly learned. But I could begin. I still watch Unity tutorials and I read their documentation, but it's more piecemeal now, so as subjects emerge that I find I need to learn a little bit more about, I look into them individually. For example, a while ago, I really needed to learn more about how particle systems work. I knew on the technical level, but I couldn't use the tools effectively. I, I couldn't express myself with them. As it turns out, they had just put up a nice little series on their YouTube channel, and the people at Unity are doing this constantly. I don't know what subjects you would need a refresher on, but I'm letting you know that between their videos and their documentation, I rarely do much more than a Google search of their stuff before I find my result. For me, when I reached this part in my journey, I had transitioned from needing to be told how to do everything, to fiddling around with things a bit on my own, to switching to a new teacher, to finally teaching myself without formal direction. The beginner stage was behind me and further learning could happen from trying to blaze my own trail. I could finally begin the real journey. Next time on In Dao, Way of the Indie, Dave delves into the psychology of learning how to not be a quitter who gets burned out.